Hey guys, what's up? I was go three here, also known as Kim, with a great buddy of mine. We got the great and fabulous Deke Slayer over here. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. I had to gripe one of the best and brightest Arizona Coyotes fans I know. He is such a proud Arizona Coyote fan. So I had to ask him to do this with me today to talk a little bit about his fandom and Mullet Arena that has just opened for the Arizona Coyotes. So Deke, get into what you do. Tell us everything you do online sure so my big thing then and, and i think what everybody kind of knows me for is twitch uh twitch.tv slash deke slayer i stream a lot of nhl started in 2019 from nhl 19 all the way up to 23 been streaming it every year mixed in a couple other games uh here and there but hockey's always been my favorite sport and something that i'm committed to and especially the ea franchise so i've uh, been doing that a lot trying to uh see if i can expand myself out with youtube like everybody else wants to do and and just kind of see where that goes but twitch is 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 really my home and uh, I'm excited to be there and, and to be partnered with great, uh, great esports org like Lazarus and Warrior Hockey and also be part of the EA content creator program has just been uh, incredible and uh, having a lot of fun, a lot of fun with this new season. Yeah, he's a lot of fun. To, I, that's how I found Deke is through Twitch and he's so much fun to watch on there. He loves to going picking random franchises, getting them to win the Stanley Cup makes you feel a little bit of hope. <laughs> yep, at least unless it's Toronto, which is one of the ones I've actually struggled with. Though, <laughs> I, I've had, I've struggled with, I, I can win it with every team. And then one for two years, I couldn't win with Toronto. And it was, they weren't happy. They were not happy with me. But moving on ahead, talk a little bit about how you became an Arizona Coyotes fan. How long have you been an Arizona Coyotes fan? And uh, your love of the team. So I moved uh, to Arizona from Detroit in 2007. I was uh, always a Wings fan prior to that. I still am. Um, but when I moved to Arizona, I, I started to try and, and follow the Coyotes. I said, well, I live here now. I want to support the team that's here. And I was more of a, a casual fan. And whenever the, I would only go to games when the Red Wings were in town. Or, you know, I put on my Zetterberg jersey or, you know, my Osgood or whatever and go to the game. But uh, as time went on, um, I started reading more about, you know, the team and, and the ownership issues that the team had at the time. And around 2009, um, when the team was going to get sold uh, to Jim Balsilli, who uh, at the time ran Research in Motion, the BlackBerry company, and was going to move the team to Hamilton, Ontario, um, I started paying more attention to it. And when that, you know, fell through as it should have, because they weren't even going through the NHL to try and move that team, move the team, um, I started paying more attention to it. And what really turned me into a fan was the amount of uh negative press the team got uh specifically from canadian media and the the more people the more articles i would read that hated this team the more i started to become a fan of it and i'm like and i don't it was just it was a draw for me and i was like if you're gonna hate this team and this is my team now because i live in arizona i'm gonna support this team and so every time one of these artists would come out i become a bigger fan of this team um and so that's really what drew me to the Coyotes, and I would try to go to as many games as I could. And as time went on, and especially once I got into streaming in 2019, now there was a long time, obviously, from 09 to 19 when I started streaming. But, you know, I always was a ca I was more of a casual fan for a while, and I kind of lost interest in the league from about 2012, 2016, 17. I really wasn't interested, um, mostly because um, I had to constantly watch the LA Kings, Boston Bruins, and Chicago Blackhawks constantly win. And uh, that was not fun. So, um, anyway, <laughs> like personal guys. Again, I'm a Red Wings fan, so, you know, I had to hate the Blackhawks. Anyway, um, but, uh, you know, I got back into it when I decided I wanted to start streaming. And, um, you know, credit to uh, one of the big guys on YouTube, the hockey guy. He kind of drew me back yeah. into the sport, too. Um, I started watching his videos, started paying more attention to the league and the games, and started finding myself going to Gila River Arena more and more. Uh, would go to preseason games, regular season games. And uh, when I, as I started, you know, getting, you know, more comfortable and doing more streaming, I started to, you know, it became my way of life and I've fallen in love with this team. And, you know, I'm, I'm very lucky to, uh, you know, have, have met people with that, with the organization and, and, you know, do all those things and, and just be in the arena and see that team uh, and, and cheer for them is just an incredible feeling. And knowing that we're going through a rebuild and knowing what to expect, you know, I don't mind it. Yes, of course, I want to, I want the team to win, but I understand what we're going through right now. And, and I think we finally have the ownership and management in place to kind of turn this team around and build a winner long term. Granted, it's going to take three, four years, but I think I think it's there, and I think the talent's there. 
Yeah, no, I love what you said, like a people hating on your team and just ma- that making them love you, love them more. I yep. mean, as an Islanders fan, I, I've felt that so much where people dump on your team and that just makes you love the team that much more. It makes you more passionate about them. Like, you know, you can say what you want, but this is my team and I'm yep. going to support them no matter what. It's never too late to become a fan of a team. Like, and you've shown that wholeheartedly. I mean, your whole setup here is Arizona Coyotes absolute love. And I, yeah, it looks it's- fantastic. You know, and, and with and I and I and I don't want to, you know, especially have people who come through and know I'm from Michigan. You know, I don't want to forget that. that's why I've got the you know the, the Tigers full more jersey up there. Yeah. Um, and there's a couple of things are Red Wings pennant behind me uh, that's just off camera, but you know, and and so I always try to make sure I that I represent you know as many orgs as I can, especially with you know I met NJ. Of course, NJ Devil's a friend of mine, and I, I know it's that. a rival. <laughs> I know it's a rivalry thing. He's a sweetheart though. No, and then of course, uh, Islanders and Devils, no. Not, no, not, not too much. <laughs> we team up against the Rangers. <laughs> That's right. That's fine. And you know what? And as we're recording this, you guys have a game tonight against the Florida Panthers. Islanders are playing tonight. Uh, so good luck to both our teams. But the thing that I think a lot of people want to get into, because this is a whole new thing with the league. This is very out of the blue. This is something where no one expected this to happen. Mullet Arena. The college rink for the Arizona Coyotes after the horrible situation that the Coyotes fell into with not being able to pay for their arena, having to do this quick change, but they're still the Arizona Arizona Coyotes. They're still in Arizona. So I have like a positive and negative aspect of Mullet Arena that, you know, it's, it's, it is smaller. You don't have that full NHL rink experience, but also that could also mean it's louder, that it's more intense with a full atmosphere. So I definitely want to get into it with you. How was it going to the Arizona Coyotes game from Mullet Arena? What was your experiences? What were your takeaways, a positive and negative? So getting into, you know, arriving at Mullet Arena, it's, it's nice because right now the arena is located right in downtown Tempe. Now, if, for those of you not from Arizona, uh, where we used to play in Glendale is on the far West side of the Valley. It is a very uh, tough experience to get over there when you live on the East side Um, where I live, for example, it's an hour and a half drive for me to get to Gila river arena from where I live. Tempe is much more centralized. It's just uh, outside of Phoenix. It's right. It's right there. Um, Whereas Glendale, again, it's, you have to go through, it used to have to go through Phoenix. There's now a freeway that goes around it, but you had to go through Phoenix in five o'clock traffic for a seven o'clock game. If you had to go through there, it's a nightmare. And it was a terrible drive. It was, it was, a, it was frustrating because Gila River Arena for what it was, was not a bad arena. It wasn't great. Um, I'll tell you this much. When we left at the end, I went to the final game at Gila River Arena. Uh, the arena itself was, it, it was, it's horribly outdated. Um, there are still tube at the time, still tube TVs, the old school CRT TVs up in the upper oh, decks. They were using. Yeah. <laughs> like we didn't have, like there was no, it was, it, it looked like the, the arena had been frozen in 2003 when they built it. <laughs> so it was it, to sit that the drive, the fact that it wasn't, wasn't all that. Um, honestly, I'm not going to miss it, but so going into mullet arena again, like I said, it's right in Tempe. It's a very centralized location. It is, you can, you get to park right up next to the arena if you want, if you want to pay for it and you go, there's a, it's a much smaller entrance area. So, um, which is nice because if that was a full arena, that would be chaos, but you, it's a nice, it's a smaller area you go in through, you enter the arena and it's the, the, try to think of it as very, the hallways are narrow, but it's not a bad thing. Again, it's designed to be 5,000 people and, and not, you know, 20,000, 18,000 seat arena. You go in and you know, it's your seats are really easy to get to. Um, once you go out, through uh go up the stair the staircase and into the where the arena is it opens right up it looks i I mean if you ignore the fact that yeah there's no upper deck you know the arena everything it looks like it could be an nhl barn and there's well no deke it's not it's only got five thousand seats doesn't matter it's a gorgeous arena it is you know and if you if you see these interviews between the uh the rangers and the jets who are both uh recently who just here recently yeah um they you know there was a it was a quote I, i can't remember who said it for winnipeg that that he that uh mullet arena's ice is probably some of the best ice they've ever skated on again it mm-hmm. is a it is designed to be a state-of-the-art arena asu put a lot of money into this the coyotes are putting a lot of money into this you know and i know people talk about the dressing room situation and that is because i was gonna get the dressing into that room itself is being that whole thing is being built by the coyotes it's not ready yet just that's just the way it is and everyone in the league the nhlpa the nhl everybody signed off on it they showed a picture of the visiting um locker room yep and it was 
bare bones, literal folding chairs, you know, just little wooden like stalls set up. And everyone was like, are you kidding me? But I was like, you know, this was kind of like thrown together for Arizona. They're trying their best is, you know, just to get everything out there done, like set up for the players just to even be able to play. And it feels kind of rushed. So I don't know if that's, you know, they're going to improve upon that or if that's that's it. Yeah. I understand. There, then they are. There is a facility that's being built, so they have a locker room and everything. The Coyotes. I figured. Are well, our owner Alex, Mo- Alex Morello is paying for it. He's getting it done, and then they'll move in, and everything will be fine. But the thing is, you look at things like that. You look at these the the capacity, the capacity size, and it, you go on Twitter, and it's just people who want to be mad about something. Like it doesn't. And I and I would ask this: This doesn't affect anyone's life. No. At all. They just want something to be mad about. They want to be noticed on Twitter. They go see what some Canadian blue check mark on Twitter is screaming about some guy who works for TSN or Sportsnet and decides, well, I'm going to just say what this guy says. And I'm going to sound like the smartest guy in the room. Uh, arena is 5,000 seats. That's that's poverty franchise, blah, blah, blah. It, so, I mean, you've heard it all. I mean, if you go, if you, I mean, I deal with this every day and I don't, I don't care. I don't mind it. I, I don't mind it at all. Actually. I appreciate it. It's nice. So, I mean, you go in and then let me talk about the area. Let me talk about the atmosphere real quick. Once the game got started, once we started doing pregame intro stuff, that place is loud. And I don't care that there's 5,000 people in there. It's 5,000 loud people who are excited to be there, who have a passion for this team. And there is a passion for hockey in Arizona. I don't listen to anyone out on the internet who goes out, especially in the drive-by, you know, sports media that's going to come out and say, nobody cares about hockey in Arizona, blah, blah, blah. They can't sell out. Let me explain to you one thing. In 2012, the only time the Coyotes have really ever been good, we sold out Gila River Arena every single night for all, all the way through the conference finals. You can fill an arena. The problem is we haven't had success that much. And yeah. when you ice a team that has no real star power or anything that resembles a cohesive unit, you're not going to draw. But Mullet Arena is loud. It is exciting to be there. It's a hell of a good atmosphere. It's fun. You've got the college section. Let's talk about the college section for a second. I heard that they're selling like $25 seats. Yeah, they dress, they dress up. They're, they're bleachers. They show up in banana costumes. They show up in whatever jersey they can find. They're happy as hell to be there. They're there to be loud and be excited. Okay. And the fans are just as passionate too. I mean, if you heard that game on ESPN uh, or opening night game, which is the one I was at, that place was rocking. It does, I mean, when the, when the first goal got scored, the roof about came off that place. And it was so fun to, to be a part of that. It's better than any experience I've ever had at Gila River Arena. Huh. I would rather go to a, an arena with 5,000 screaming fans than a half-empty one in, in Glendale. Like, it was, it was amazing. I invite anyone who only knows about Arizona hockey and about our, our situation, who only knows about it through the media, and especially those of you in the media, come down here. Come see a game. I did an interview with Daily Faceoff. They got to see the arena. Had nothing but nice things to say about it. I mean, you could have trashed it, but you didn't. And so I invite any of these people to come down here. See it. Meet us. We're pretty cool fans. You are. I mean, we're chill. I mean, I'm a passionate guy. You can hear it in my voice. But at the same time, it's, it's, it's a great atmosphere. Come down here. Come see us. Come see a game at Mullet Arena. And then, and then tell me what you think. If I could say anything, like I've done uh nhl booster club conference uh you do like a whole like convention together where every single fan base meets up and some of the sweetest people i've ever met are arizona coyotes fans and are dedicated arizona coyotes fans and they love the team so much in arizona they send us like christmas cards with little the little kachina on it like it's that de- there's a dedicated fan base there absolutely and i that's why i said as a plus having that little le- arena you know, maybe you could fill up, fill it up every night. It, it's going to be loud. It's going to be proud. And it could be absolutely fun. I need you to answer something for me, though, because there's there was a rumor I saw going around that Arizona has no goal horn. We do. Uh, what happened was so I actually put a video out on Twitter when the first goal got scored. The, the, the horn didn't go off. Um, That's why I, people were like. So what happened was my understanding is that it basically was just a, a malfunction. If you see the Ranger game from the other night, um, it's working. I okay. think it just didn't work opening night. So I, again, I don't work for the arena, so I don't know why, but if you, you can go back and you can hear it and it's, uh, it's, we do have a, we do have a horn. It's loud. Um, and it's, it's not what we had at Gila River. It's a different sounding one, but 
It's Probably because it's a recording to. due to actual horns. I hope it's. A, I hope it is. I don't know if it actually is a real horn or not. I mean, I know at uh, Little Caesars Arena in Detroit, they use a recording of the one that was at Joe Louis. Yeah. Arena. I hate, but I don't like recording. Yeah, like, it, it doesn't sound good. At UBS, good. if you look up, you see the horns. Yeah. You see the actual horns. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's yeah, what nothing, I. Recording is not gonna do it justice. No. So, uh, <laughs> but yeah, it is. It is. It is working. I guess. Really. Uh, definitely knowing with the situation with the home arena situation, I. I've been in your shoes. Poverty franchise. Your home sucks. You know, you yep. guys, we used to live, we used to play in Barclay Center, which is a basketball. We used to play in a basketball arena. Okay. Yep. At least you have a hockey arena. Yep. We, used we used to, to play America in the West in the nineties, which was a basket, which is yep. a basketball arena. So would you say like, cause I don't know if you took a little lap around the arena. How is the view from the seat? Every seat is there. There's any not a bad, there's not, it's a, not bad a bad seat. Even if you're standing room only, I mean, it's, I mean, there are, there are perfect sight lines. There I mean, are standing room be, only sections. Yes, you can. And there's basically so along the uh the back part of the uh there's like a the walkway there when you get past when you get up past the seats. There's like uh these uh like a bar kind of area. Not like, you know, it's just it's where you can stand there, you can lean on it kind of thing and and watch the game. Okay. Um so yeah, you can absolutely do standing room only. And in fact, uh I was actually invited to tonight's game just to do standing room. I can't make it, but gotcha. um, again, it's if you want if you, it doesn't matter, you're going to walk around anyway um because like i know and, for someone like me that would probably kill my back i'd be yeah. like i'd be sitting on like the stairs <laughs> yeah and ex and there are and i sat in normal seats it's the student section that's the bleachers and that's what mostly there they were folks how many how were the people that you met there how are the other arizona coyote fans were they optimistic were they having fun were they a little downtrodden we're having a great time i mean we <laughs> understand what this what this season is we understand what this team is we know that on paper the coyotes are designed to be one of the worst teams in the league if not the worst team in the league um, we know that it's a rebuild. We know it's about collecting assets. You know, I, I, there's guys on this team that I love like Shane Goss despair. fully expect him to get traded. I do. If he's, if he's as productive as he was last year, probably gets traded for picks. I understand that we're starting to see what is being built here and it's going to be a slow process and we're okay with it. We understand it. And we're there to have a great time. We were having a party, you know, we want to win. Obviously, of course we do, but we get what's going on. And it was, I met some incredible people there. Some of the nicest funnest rowdiest people you could meet and there's like posted them on twitter where there's a group of us and it was it was incredible and you know you feel like you could get to know just about anybody in that arena it was it was incredible what are general i would say fan base consensus about management and ownership uh kind of depends on who you ask i mean like i said we understand what it is everybody seems everybody loves bill armstrong our general manager um i have been vocal about my issues with alex Maruello, our owner mostly because I think he tries to hide behind Xavier Gutierrez, yeah. who is mm -hmm. kind of the mouthpiece of the team. And Xavier's a good guy. And I understand he's kind of the politician for the team. Um, he's the one that goes to the Tempe City Council meetings, talks about the new arena that they want to build. Yeah. And he's kind of like that mouthpiece for Alex. For me, I want to see my team's owner. I want to know. I, and I, you can tell Xavier can tell me he's committed. I can hear that he's committed. I need to hear him say it. I want him to do it. I would love it if he sat down with uh, one of our reporters here. His name's Craig Morgan. He's a Coyotes writer, and Craig is one of the best out there. And I would love it if Alex sat down with him and just, you know, talked about what his plan are for this, what what he wants this team to be. You know, I mean, I don't think we've seen. I mean, we see him occasionally, but it's very passing. He doesn't do press, and so I think that I'd like to see him. And I like, and I've said that before. And like, what's the plan? What do you want for the future of yeah, us? Yeah, like, and like we understand ABC. you want the arena. I want to know that how I want to know your commit. I want you to. I want to hear you say it. You know what? I love the optimism, even. I, you know, even when your team's dead last, that is true hockey fandom. And I appreciate your love for the Arizona Coyotes and just always being there for them. Um, to finish it off, just uh, if you want to say anything last, last says about Arizona or anything that you feel like people need to hear. In terms of Arizona outside of hockey? Yeah, sure. Well, I mean, it is honestly, this is one of the most beautiful states you could ever visit. Uh, Sedona is gorgeous. It's breathtaking. You have the Grand Canyon. We've got places like Tombstone if you want to go play Old West shooties. No, just kidding. I mean, you can do the Old West thing, but I don't think you can shoot anybody. But anyway, uh, it is it is a blast here. And there's Flagstaff, which is always gorgeous. And that's the only place that that's really the only. And by the way, if you ever wonder if we got snow in Arizona, yes, we get it up north because it's in the mountains. But so we do have snow here, um, which is take that people who say it's always hot in Arizona. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> take that hockey writers. Right. <laughs> you have snow here. You can have the winter class going Flagstaff. You can make it there you go. There you go. Um, but yeah, in terms of the team, I mean, it's a passionate fan base. It is there. Hockey works here. I mean, I play hockey three times a week and two of them are for practices. Our practices are routinely full. Our league is full. Uh, it works here. In fact, I would, I would, I would say this much. We need more rinks here. 
hockey is very, very popular here. And it is in thank you part to a lot of the transplants that come here. They are helping build the sport here and it works. And there is an outreach. The Coyotes do a hell of a job doing outreach uh, with the communities, both Tempe and around the state of Arizona. And I would just say that hockey is a very, very big sport here. And I wish more people would come and see and notice that for themselves. Uh, and I hope they will as time goes on. Thank you so much, Deke. Thank you for coming on, talking about your experiences as a Coyotes fan. That firsthand viewpoint from you is just so much. It filled me in so much from what you just see on social media. You know, people saying, you know, the poverty franchise can't believe this is a thing. This shouldn't be a thing. People downgrading the team so much, but getting it from a fan's point of point of view, it's just so treasure. It's just such a treasure to get a real point of view out of it, to know how it's actually going down there. So I appreciate and thank you so much for letting everyone know what it's truly like in Arizona. It was my pleasure. Um, thank you for inviting me. Thank you so much. And please just plug anything you want to plug, your Twitch, your your Twitter, anything you want to just put on, go for yeah, it. Yeah, of course. Obviously, Twitch is my big thing. Twitch.tv slash Deke Slayer. Doing a lot of NHL 23 right now. Having a blast doing it. I'm also on Twitter at Deke Slayer. Uh, pretty much at Deke Slayer on pretty much every social media platform. And uh, I look forward to interacting with everybody uh, who checks this out and look forward to talking to you and, and talking more about the Coyotes and, and what our situation is here as time goes on. Again, we got a big month coming up with the uh, hopefully getting the arena approved, uh, at least by the city council, moving that forward. And then eventually, if they do decide to put it to a vote uh, to, the, to the voters of Tempe, well, we'll go there. We'll, we'll, we'll be there for that, too. My heart goes out to the Arizona Coyotes fans about getting a new arena. We've been there. We're wishing you the best. We hope that new arena is approved, built, and everything's just one, two, three, that you can have beautiful hockey in Tempe, and then no one's going to talk anything about your team again. So God bless. Thank Thank you. you so much, guys, for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day.